Lies of P is the newest Souls-like brought to you by NeoWiz Games. This is their first Souls-like on the market and is described as a thrilling Souls-like that takes the story of Pinocchio, turns it on its head and sets it against the darkly elegant backdrop of the Belle Epoque era. But I know what you're thinking. How does Lies of P fare when compared to the OGs of Souls games themselves from software? And more specifically, Elden Ring is what we're going to be comparing it to. Disclaimer for this video, this is all early game footage and mostly spoiler free. I am going to be talking about the mechanics and a lot of stuff, but for the most part, I'm not going to be showing much that's so, you know, late in the game. Um, and I also know that Lies of P is by a much smaller studio than FromSoft. I am comparing it to the King of Souls games from software. So please bear that in mind. I'm not going to be harsh with this. I am being realistic. Um, but yes, please enjoy the video. Also, all the gameplay shown here will be either from my Twitch channel or from trailers found on YouTube, so it's going to be mostly spoiler-free. But if you do want to come by the Twitch, then please use the link in the description. I play games live almost every single weekday, so come through and come say hi. As we go along with the video, I want to share my thoughts on Lies of Peace. Think of this as more of an overview and a review. I'm going to try and be as unbiased as I can and analyze the game as much as possible from my 45-hour playthrough. My first time playing Lies of P was with the demo they released just a few months before its official release, and to be honest, I was very hesitant. I've been burned with Souls-like clones before with games such as Thymysia, Mortal Shell. Yeah, I get it. Mortal Shell a lot of people like, but it just wasn't for me. I even had some issues with Elden Ring way back when, although I still rate that game extremely highly. I just don't think it's as perfect as everybody makes out, especially on multiple playthroughs. So with this demo, I thought it'd be a great time to try a game before I risk wasting my money. But lo and behold, Xbox Game Pass came in clutch and let us play Lies of P for a mere subscription price. Happy gamers all round. The demo I found to be fun. The graphics, world design, enemies and detail to the weapons, equipment and inventory all seemed to be of a very high quality, which was surprising. It was generally amazing. The few issues that I did have with the demo actually came from the gameplay. I chose a heavy weapon and surprise, surprise, found it to be slow. The rolling seemed to be almost useless with a heavy reliance on parrying and blocking. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. But I legally can't. Which usually isn't my style of gameplay, but it's totally fine. All of this kind of left the bad taste in my mouth with some of the gameplay stuff and i kind of went from thinking this was going to be a great game to maybe it's not going to be as good as i thought with the gameplay seeming a bit slow but i was actually so wrong <laughs> by the time the game actually came out it drops on game pass and it reviews quite well A lot of my streamer friends seem to be enjoying the game and recommending it to me, so I think, what's the worst that can happen if I go back to it? It's on Game Pass, I don't even have to pay for it other than the subscription price, it's fine. Worst case scenario, I've wasted a bit of time and I can forget about it and uninstall it if I don't like it. I decided to start the game again instead of continue from my demo progress, which I do like they gave you the option of that, but I never really do it, especially I kind of wanted to, you know, um, remember what I was doing and what had previously happened. But knowing my disdain for the heavier weapon in the demo, I chose a more balanced and well-rounded starting weapon this time around. Speed seems to be the best way for me to not get crushed at every obstacle I meet. This isn't a meme. I genuinely have a crush on you. And I was right, this weapon seemed to fit my playstyle well, and honestly, it goes to show how a difference in weapon and playstyle can actually make the difference to whether you're going to be good or even enjoy your experience with Souls Likes. Builds are very important, not always super necessary, people get by, people don't always focus or min max or anything like that, but it's important nonetheless. As you can see in this gameplay, this enemy wasn't too much of an issue for me here, but in the demo, trust me, he wiped me out. Got him. Compared to FromSoft's games, it's quite similar, but nowhere near as detailed. Liza P only gives you three starting options based on a weapon, but Elden Ring, for example, has multiple classes based on weapons, armor, stats, whether you can or can't use magic. I still think Liza P does this well, and the choice is really nice. It's just not quite FromSoft level. <laughs> So, like many Souls-likes, and one of the key parts of it being considered a Souls-like is the use of bonfires, uh, save points, checkpoints where you spawn, but if you use it, all the enemies will respawn around you. You get the idea, you've seen this in many games. In this case, they're called Stargazers, and they do the exact same as bonfires in Dark Souls. You can level up here sometimes, this changes with the story, depending. You can rest and recover your stats, teleport to other Stargazers you've discovered during your playthrough. If you've played any Souls-like on the planet, you kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about. 
the leveling is very similar too. The stats all contribute to improving various attributes such as HP, stamina, motivity, technique, etc. It's all the same under another name in some cases. For this playthrough, I decided to dump all my levels into Mativity, which is basically raw strength, and become somewhat of a glass cannon. Sometimes this worked well, and other times, well... Let's just say my controller was almost battered into my desk numerous times. This is pretty much the same as all FromSoft games. I like this mechanic a lot. It's a big win in my eyes. It kind of what it's what makes Souls like Souls likes. Unlike FromSoft's last Souls game, Smash Hit Elden Ring, Liza P goes for a more classic game design in terms of its levels. It's fairly linear with some optional side alleys and pathways if you want to find all the items and certain secrets. There are also shortcuts you can unlock so you're not always respawning like 10 minutes from where you died, which I really enjoyed. When finding some of these shortcuts, I must jump for joy. Yippee, yippee. They're like a checkpoint of their own and it makes traversing the various detailed areas a lot smoother and less frustrating than if they weren't there at all. I think I personally would have enjoyed a tad more optional pathways and areas to spice up the game and make second playthroughs more enticing, but that's just a nitpick. Overall, I love the level design with a few exceptions maybe later in the game, but even so, that's just tiny grievances. The enemy placement is also... okay. It's nothing special, sometimes they're just randomly placed and wandering around. Other times they're lurking around corners waiting for you to pass so that they can slash at you really quickly. It's simple, but it works. Later in the game, some of the enemy types are placed differently and act differently based on various story events and or based on their lore. For example, the puppets tend to wander around slowly until triggered to attack, whereas later in the game, they seem docile lost, even angrier and quicker due to certain events that transpire in the story. It really helps the world feel real and like it was evolving at all times. I'm a very big fan of this. I loved everything about it. I actually prefer this linear-ish level design. It makes a nice change from a lot of games these days, trying to just be these huge open world spectacles. And even though I do enjoy that and I enjoyed Elden Ring for it being a big open world, I do prefer kind of the older style and I do think it lets Elden Ring down a tad for multiple playthroughs. I wasn't as excited to get back into Elden Ring knowing how much I had to get through, whereas this is a lot more linear and simple. Okay, so this is what we were all waiting for, right? The bosses in Souls games are the meat and potatoes, the gabagoo, the filet mignon, and in Lies of P, they are honestly excellent for the most part. The designs of all the bosses are nothing short of phenomenal. They're mostly very unique with a few exceptions, but nothing crazy. They have different movesets, multiple phases, amazing lore, and to be honest, they're all absolute pleasures to fight. This footage shows me fighting a boss in the early game and is actually included in the demo of the game. It was such a great fight. The time of the Paris was tough, but satisfying, and the music. Oh my god, the music in this game is awesome. Music to my ear. I'm not going too deep into spoilers in this video, of course, but the later game bosses are some of my favourites in all Souls games. It's actually unreal how well they did with some of these bosses. My only issue with some of these boss fights isn't really specific to the bosses, but with every enemy in the game. They have very weird delayed attacks. Now, I know FromSoft's enemies sometimes delay their attacks just before they're about to hit to throw off the player, but in this game, it seems like every other attack is a weird stuttered delayed attack that is there purely to cause issues and throw off the timing. Not in like a fair way, but more of a cheap way. This isn't a huge issue, but I personally feel like it's a cheap way to up the difficulty of a game, as without these delays, I think I would have rarely died to these bosses, or at least nowhere near as much as I did. Same with parry windows. Sometimes they just seem impossibly small. Like, Sekiro is reliant on parrying and you need to be precise, but this game? Oh my god, one tenth of a second off and you're gonna get hit and almost killed. It is brutal. I did eventually get the hang of it, but it was rough, and has turned away a lot of players from the game, but get good, I guess? I don't know? In the immortal words of the roly-poly Elder Lords. Get good, scrub. Overall, I think mechanically the main bosses, not those side reused bosses you fight a thousand times in caves, Elden Ring is better. The bosses feel more fair and well-rounded than relying on cheap delays and unblockable, unavoidable attacks. But in terms of design, I actually think Lies of P nails it and it's pretty much perfect. I think the reused bosses in Elden Ring does bring it down, um, even though they have some of the best boss fights in the main kind of series of fights. I'm looking at you, Godfrey, you glorious bearded badass. But yeah, I don't know. I think I've got to give it to Lies of P. Elden Ring is amazing and you can't beat from soft designs and bosses. But Lies of P, I just think is more consistent. 
Lies of P does an excellent job of setting up its world. It has the same kind of storytelling as classic FromSoft games with the inferences from the environment, item descriptions, collectibles you can find, etc. But it also balances cutscenes and dialogue heavy moments that will straight up tell you what's going on, what you have to do, and they make it quite simple for the most part. It took me over 100 hours to figure out what I was doing in Elden Ring story-wise, and I still had to Google things to fill in the blanks. But with Lies of P, I just got it. The characters are great and detailed, they have their own background, desires it makes for some intriguing kind of thoughts and ideas even within the people you think are on your side not everything is always as it seems and then there's the whole truth or lie mechanic i won't get too much into this for spoiler reasons but i absolutely loved it you get certain choices during moments of the story that will determine how characters will react to you and how the player themselves will change it may even have long-lasting implications but who am i to say all right then, keep your secrets. Huh? But overall, I loved everything about the world building and the lore. It made the world and characters that bit deeper. It got me invested. I think Liza P did a great job for more casual players, whereas Elden Ring made a deeper and more hidden and investigative story and lore, which I know many fans of these games, myself included, love. But if you're looking for something a bit more straightforward, a bit more keeping you on the tracks and telling you what you need to do, then this might be more for you. <laughs> Overall, Lies of P is one of my favorite games this year. I couldn't put it down when I started it and got into it. And although it's not perfect, I think it's a masterclass at proving that finally, Souls likes can be done well if they just get the time, commitment, and passion put into them that they deserve. And so for that reason, I'm placing this game in my top three Souls games of all time. That's right, a non-FromSoft game in my top three. It is, in my opinion, flawed perfection. But thank you, everybody. If you enjoyed this detailed look into my thoughts, review, and just a general rant about Lies of P and its comparison to Elden Ring in certain aspects, um, then please drop a like and comment. Do you guys want to see me rank all of the Lies of P bosses next? If this video does well, then I'll make sure to get that out as soon as possible. That video should be coming soon. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.